Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, the desktop companion software you last installed in 2002. Where have you been? It's been so long. I've missed you. And this is episode 8, let's say, of my Let's Play of Paradise Killer, which is a blind Let's Play that I have been working on for the last couple weeks, I guess. Anyway, so we're going to pick up where we left off, and uh, by that I mean we're going to go do something entirely different to whatever it was I said we were going to do last time. First, it's worth taking a quick look from here, because um, while one of the major influences of the architecture of the city is... Uh, is, well, Miami, <laughs> 1980s synthwave Miami. Uh, another major influence is Japanese architecture, particularly sort of suburban, big, like outskirts of big cities, suburban Japanese architecture, um, which is probably at its clearest with this embankmented river with the uh, rather lovely snazzy little flags dangling above it, which probably have a proper name, but I don't know what it is. Anyway, so this is part of the citizens' housing, which we will investigate later on. What we're going to do first today, before we do anything else, and uh, before I get distracted and start rambling about some bullshit, is that we are going to actually go take a look at this bar, because up there is Sam Daybreak, the nearest by of the various syndicate members that we need to go talk to. So we may as well go see him now, rather than... Uh, go somewhere else and then come back, you know? It's very important to be efficient with our wandering since we have literally all of the time in the world. I'm just gonna unlock this fast travel point first though. Fast travel unlocked. Download skins obtained. Escape to the city. The city hides. The city protects. You need to hide yourself in the city. They're coming for you. Ominous. I wonder if that's literal. I wonder if, uh, Someone or something is actually coming for us. Dead Nebula, the delicious... Acid's favourite, the delicious new premium beer from Crimson Acid and Dead Nebula. And another piece of music as well. House of Bliss, also by APOC. The heat gave way, as it always does, to lust. Ours was a life of indulgence. We were fierce, we were alive. Ten seconds across the board. I wonder if I can reread those. Hey, uh, I'll talk to you in a second. I wonder if we can reread those from inside the thing. Actually, can I get up here? I bet the secrets on your. I bet the secrets on your roof that you're not telling me about. Paradise Island 249th annual worship date with Crimson Acid competition. Find a winning ring pull on a can of Dead Nebula's new Acid's favorite premium beer and win a worship date with your favorite idol. I wonder what it means that, um, okay, I mean, first off, the idea of, like, uh, you know, there's, there's something fun happening there combining the idea of the idol in terms of, you know, a music or fashion idol and uh, a literal sense of a an object of worship, which is interesting, but it's also interesting considering what does that mean in the context of this island where worship is reserved for the, the ancient dead gods? Um, is Crimson Acid in some way stealing worship that should be directed towards the gods, and what does that mean for her in a cosmological sense? Island Sequence 23. This one is nearly perfect. It lasts for so long. Carmelina is truly a genius. Right, okay, well, before I go climbing around on the roof and crawling around and so on, let's, uh, let's have a quick word with Sam Daybreak. Sam Daybreak. Bar Master. Also a cool skeleton. Like, I do like this guy's vibes. This seems pretty rad. Hey, LD, heard you were back. Sam Daybreak, Barmaster. Born in the shadow of the dragon in Turkey in AD 999 under the sign of Shadow Zero. Sam took to killing like breathing. He killed to survive on the streets and then killed as a soldier before just killing for fun. He became a hitman extraordinaire under the banner of Shadow Zero. He met Lydia on the battlefield. They battled for two weeks, destroying the town of Raz-009. Lydia claimed victory and stabbed Sam through the heart. While fighting, he had fallen in love with Lydia and in his moment of death refused to leave her. His skin fell away and his skeleton hardened, becoming a deep red as he confessed his love for her. 
she too had fallen for him and accepted his confession. They fled to get married. He renounced his murderous ways and refuses to commit harm to others. Starlight is filling you in, isn't she? Have you forgotten about us during exile? I suppose isolation clouds the mind, doesn't it? Hey Sam, it's been a while. Nice jacket. Oh, you noticed? It was a gift from Lydia. She always had good taste. Doesn't she? Lydia has missed drinking with you. I miss you two as well. You're the only normal people on these islands. That's nice of you to say, LD. It would be nicer if you were back under better circumstances, though, wouldn't it? The syndicate's in a bad place. It's devastating, isn't it? Our friends and colleagues have been taken from us. There's not a lot of wailing grieving going on. We've existed for unknown epochs of time, haven't we? It gives everyone a different perspective on things. How's the whiskey blend on this island? Some vanilla, caramel, spice, and just a hint of smoke. The spice is unusual. The whiskey tastes like the island it's made on, and this has been a peaceful island. The caramel and vanilla are in harmony. The spice twists up your mouth, it coils and slips between the other flavours. What about the smoke? It's there, but barely. You know what they say about smoke, though, right? Is there anything I can help you with? Alright, time to start grilling him. This is this list is gonna get unmanageable the more people we meet. Do you really think Henry did this, Sammy? Well, it's hard to say, isn't it? It's a hell of a crime. What do you believe, LD? I'm still making my truth. Aikiko found him with council blood in his stomach. That's messed up, isn't it? He's clearly a sicko. And that's what I'm trying to work out. Can you think of anyone that would want to kill the council? Kill the council, the crime of the century, or the millennium? I don't think I do, LD. I'm really sorry I can't be more help. Everyone here is a loyal member of the Syndicate, aren't they? I hope that's true. So, where were you at the time of the murder? Am I under suspicion, LD? Sam, I'm an investigator. Of course, LD, we must all cooperate, mustn't we? Lydia had taken me to the Paradise Gates. I finished packing up the bar, I spent a few minutes taking the place in. I couldn't have expected to be back here, could I? What time did you leave the bar? I let Yuri know I was good to go, Lydia came to get me, and we went to the gates. She picked me up at about 10 to midnight. We arrived at the gates at about 5 to midnight. Any proof? The nightmare computers at the gates will have the logs. I'll check them out. So, I mean, that corroborates what Lydia says, I guess, but I mean, they're married, so it makes sense that they would back each other's story up and have an opportunity to get their sort of story straight as well. Um, because she did say that she was dropping someone off at the time of the murder. What about your motive? A sure thing, what do you need to know? Have you got anything you'd like to tell me? I don't think so, LD. We're happy. You two might be the only ones. Well, I hope not. Wouldn't it be awful if we were? Did you see Yuri last night? Lydia tried phoning him. You should ask her, shouldn't you? Well, he's the dispatcher for her uh, business, so I guess that makes sense. Do you know anything about the murder of the Marshal Guards outside of the council building? I, I don't, do I, LD? Terrible business, isn't it? Alright, what about K-Hacks? I don't think I can help you on this one, can I? Maybe check out his place overlooking the ocean. Everyone's telling me to go there. Alright, well, did you see the architect last night? Have you asked her? That would be my first stop. I feel like he's being as obstructive as some of the others, he's just being nicer about it. Um... What about Doom Jazz? He said he'd been in his clinic, didn't he? Yeah, he's just he's just parroting the same things. What do you know about the second Holy Seal? It's a mystery, isn't it? Not for me to know, really, is it? Yeah, so basically, basically he's doing the correct thing, and uh, his response to uh, the police asking him questions is to go, I don't know nothing, Gov. <laughs> Wasn't me, I don't know. Wasn't there, don't know anything about it. Who's who's Sam Daybreak? I don't know. What are you talking about? Fancy a drink? Ah, uh, fuck it, yeah. What do you recommend? How long since you had a drink? Three million days. Feel like catching up? In moderation. A mass murderer does need solving. A bar is somewhere to lose your worries, isn't it? 
How about starting with a highball? Sounds good. Please enjoy. Oh, that's a good highball. You're too kind, LD. I'm still practicing. Wow, still practicing after, what, a thousand years this island has lasted so far? This is Dead Nebula's Beyond Horizon, a nice blended whiskey. It has a crisp flavor and a sweet, smoky aroma. It goes perfectly with the soda water and a garnish of mint to make a nice highball. Oh, this is making me, this is making me want to drink now. You've been running a bar for longer than I've been alive. You're a master. There is always something new to learn and improve, isn't there? Are you chasing a goal that's out of reach? It doesn't matter if it is out of reach, does it, investigator? It only matters that you're trying and that you improve. The key to a highball is the ice. The ice is frozen at uh, minus 20 degrees Celsius and it makes the ice harder so it doesn't melt. You can enjoy the taste of the ingredients without them being diluted. The ice is cut to provide a tight fit in the glass. A highball has to be stirred gently so the soda doesn't fizz. You stir without the ice moving apart and it chills it nicely, doesn't it? You always make the perfect drink. Please, LT, I am still learning. I need to go breathe life back into paradise. Good to talk to you. It's always a pleasure. Stop in again, won't you? Absolutely. I wonder... May you always live in the shadow. And may you reach the moon. I wonder to what extent it's possible to build your relationship with these people. Obviously, this game does take influence from, uh, you know, the grand tradition of the dating simulator. So I find myself absolutely deeply curious as to... Oh, hey, Shinji. You're up here. Is that an upgrade? Oh, shit. Is this an upgrade? I'm a genius. Oh, it's just a starlight skin. That's weird. I didn't know you could get these lying around. The day breaks. Ex-assassins who fell in love in combat. The most beautiful story ever told. I mean, these two are pretty radical, but... I, I mean, it seems extremely likely that whoever breached the second seal was these two, because one of the helmets smells like them, and uh, there were two helmets, right? So two people broke through, and these two are a, a duo. They work together. They live together. They are literally married. Oh, interesting. What's this? Way of Blood Bar, 25th Island Sequence. Why do it? Why do what? The crime, the murder, the paradise killing. To reshape the world. When you pull a trigger or thrust a knife, the world branches. The old world is gone. It exists in history. Then history is forgotten, the world is remade or reshaped. It depends. We all live in the new world after that. The world must get reshaped a lot. More than you know. Hmm. Interesting. I wasn't expecting there to be these little... Vignettes back to the opening sequence, or perhaps I was expecting it, but only as like a end of chapter one start of thing, start of chapter two type thing. A gothic second whiskey, aged for longer in specially constructed crypts, tended to by self-possessed ghouls. Their obsession took them and warped them. All they do is caress the battle barrels until it is time to bottle. Yeah, I mean that's about as goth as whiskey gets. Let's be honest. I could really go for a cocktail. How did you get into cocktails? When the bar closes, I hang out on the roof and down whatever's left. <laughs> uh, cocktails are one of the few good things humans have made. What's your favourite? I like a nice mojito. Lots of rum and mint. We should stop this conversation. It's been so long since I had a mojito. Wanna grab a few and watch the island die? No can do. Whatever. I really need to stop shooting poor Shinji down. He just wants to have a good time. Aha, blood crystal. I should probably actually try and gather a whole bunch of blood crystals now. Since... Oh, do you think that's... What is that over there? That's... Let's see. I'm here at the top of the citizen housing. So the... The dead zone is the big wall thing, which is there. So that is that the dead zone over there? That looks suspicious. It looks interesting. I want to have a look at it when I can actually reach it safely. Speaking of sight lines and stuff, actually, hey, can I just... I wonder if I was actually supposed to be able to get in there at all. 
I think I mentioned previously that I am idly curious about the potential speedrunning tricks in this game because you wouldn't expect a uh, a romance sim, like a rom a dating sim or visual novel type game to have platforming at all. But you know, it gives you a double jump and an air dash and all of this stuff. So I can clearly get to places I'm not supposed to be able to get to. Um, but I just fuck. Well. Anyway, as I was saying, more sensibly taking the ladder down. There's definitely oh a trapdoor. Interesting. Yeah, there's definitely an idea that I should be breaking into places and sneaking around and finding secret accesses. But what I don't know is is to what extent it's possible to sequence break just by, you know, bypassing walls and getting over stuff. Right, let's take a look in the back door of, uh, of the bar. This might even be the home they live in. I don't know if they live at the bar. I'm starting to wonder what the line is between, you know, investigating and just breaking and entering. Technically, we have jurisdiction to do anything anywhere we like, but as we can tell from real life, unlimited or even just extensive police powers are almost always used for corruption almost instantaneously. Safe sealed by a nightmare computer. I wonder if I can crack it. We'll have to come back when we have pyramids and worship. And another safe, which we can also probably not unlock. We just need pyramids for that one, though. Uh, I mean, geez, why would the back room of a bar have a safe? How suspicious. It's not remotely suspicious. I'm being sarcastic. So let's just have a look down the hatch as well. secret tunnel. So, um, yeah. I do find myself wondering um, to what extent we're encouraged to try and use platforming to solve problems. I would have assumed going in that uh, like these places are constructed to show us things that we can't reach and encourage us to try and reach them. Going into this, I would have assumed that we were kind of supposed to be you know, opening up pathways through conversations and talking and convincing people of things and maybe finding secret switches or doing switch puzzles. As soon as it gives me platforming tools, however, I immediately find myself attempting to solve problems with platforming. And I think these places are very... A secret tunnel into the dead zone? Someone's been naughty. Aha, uh -huh, so we can get inside the dead zone. That's interesting and highly suspicious. So this is what a place looks like when it's been all fucked up by uh, by demon intrusion, I guess. Anyway, I'm just going to finish my thought before I get completely distracted, which was that... Um, oh shit, they're distilling stuff here. Uh, that was not the thought. The thought was that... The, um, yeah, the, the simple fact that we are given platforming tools immediately makes me see the environments differently, and whenever I see something I cannot currently reach, instead of attempting to reach it through some kind of narrative progression um, or puzzling, I am just immediately like, well, I guess I have to solve this with platforming, which is immensely freeing. It's nice to just feel like it's okay for me to jump over walls and climb up stuff and try to sequence break on purpose. Uh, the fact that I'm given those tools kind of enables me to use those tools. This is a whiskey distillery. It's in use, but the dead zone is supposed to be sealed. Has Sammy been making an illegal blend? There's something odd here. This is a medical grade blood chiller designed to keep blood cold when it's being transported. There's an empty blood bottle inside. The label has been scratched off, but I can just make out a K as the first letter of the name. Blood not found. This bottle has been scrubbed clean. There's no trace of any blood. After being used, this was clean to remove the evidence, but why keep it? Paranoia? No one comes into the dead zone, so it wouldn't be found. And it helps incriminate others if this is unaccounted for. I need to find out what this is linked to. Just going to Sam about it without context will make him clam up. Interesting. So yeah, this, this is more evidence for my literally everyone who's involved in this co uh, conspiracy. Which... Uh, hmm. Which... What name? A K. The first letter of the name is the K. Okay. So Akiko, Carmelina. Nobody's got a K name. Except for K Hacks, I suppose. So I could that be, I suppose it could be K Hacks' blood. Um, or possibly. 
Let's see. Kafka memory, maybe? Kafka memory. Who was the guy who who was the guy who distilled all of the money from his blood? One of these assholes was this guy. Leon Disaster. Okay, so that's someone else. Because I thought maybe they were distilling illegal money. Duplicating the guy's blood or something, but Kafka memory is someone else entirely. Isaiah Nicolina, Jahim, Madam Complex, Balthazar Tears, just Kax. So I, I, that, maybe that is Kax's blood. Huh. The mystery deepens. But yeah, so um I wonder if it I wonder if it is Lydia and Sam Daybreak did this and attempted to and then Grand Marshal Aikiko and Doctor Doom Jazz are trying to cover their own asses. Uh, or Aikiko's ass at any rate. Um, the nature of which we have yet to discover. And we will never discover because the characters in this game are two-dimensional and attempt to always face you, although they are, as I've described previously, not actually sprites. They're not actually two-dimensional. But they won't show you their butts, and therefore we are fundamentally unable to assess the nature of Aikiko's butt. Let's have a look at this. Twenty fifth Island sequence again. Who do you think rules the world? The Syndicate? No, not our world. The real world? No, not that one either. What other world is there? The metaphorical world. The concept of world. You mean the gods? No, yes. Are they the only gods? Probably, possibly, maybe, definitely, absolutely not. How can we say? How can we know? If you worry about that, you'll lose yourself. I don't want to lose myself. Good. It's easy to do. I still cannot shake the feeling this this game is written by people who think it's deeper than it is. But I'll have to talk about that more later once I've thought about it a bit more. Winning Devil Whiskey. A whiskey that hasn't been aged. Nutty, sweet, and peppery. Sometimes drunk for luck, true in gambling. Interesting. So it does like he was just distilling ordinary booze here. Um, but the connection between the booze and the blood is curious. Something has been destroyed here. Starlight says there's nothing unusual here. Some metals, plastic, tinted glass, and fire-resistant fabric. No way to tell what it was. This is a this is a twist I was not expecting. I I wonder what there is to find in here. I wonder how much risk of demonic corruption there is just to me being in this place even. But yeah, so I'm gonna ramble about something else real briefly while I explore and see what Oh. Is there a is there a dead nebula here? I, I kinda would like some dead nebula. Relic obtained. Island sequence seventeen. Ah, the seventeenth island. Remember that? Remember them? Remember those? Enough to wish for death. Grim. But yeah, so one of the things that's interesting about this island, I talked about previously, was sight lines. Which is the way that, um... Oh, God knows what that did. Uh, which is the way that the island is constructed by the game's designers to allow us to... I'll go through here in a minute. Uh, to allow us to see different places. Because the way that you... the same way you achieve composition in a painting or a photograph, is achieved in a 3D space through the medium of sightlines, through lining up visions so that the, the gap between buildings will frame something beautifully, for example. Dead Nebula. The mascot was designed many islands ago by the artist Ranoi. Kids love him. So, um... But, this is a, a real principle. It's not just used in 3D modelling, it's very important to architecture and landscaping. And so, not just um, diegetically, uh, not just exegetically, have the game designers designed a space to look good for us. I think my Xbox controller is breaking. That's infuriating. I keep having to buy goddamn new ones. It's not like I treat them badly. Um, what was I saying? Anyway, um, but it's also diegetically something that exists within the game world itself, because this island was designed by an architect. And I think there's a very interesting and notable component. Relic obtained. Island sequence 16, a time for watching Crow's Circle. Which is that um, you can't see the, the nasty, cheap, unpleasant 
working class parts of the island when you are looking from where the rich people live. This is an airlock. That's probably the airlock back into the main part of the island. Is it this purple stuff that's making me walk funny or is it my controller? I swear that was a... There was a dead nebula machine here. Anyway, so from the place where the wealthy uh, members of the island live, the syndicate, you cannot actually see the factory. You cannot see the agricultural gardens. You cannot see the reality folding drive. Um, they're actually hidden from view by the temple. Which itself kind of factors into this like absolute desire to not think about it. Because this is paradise, isn't it? It's their paradise. Just for them. Um, but it's not a paradise for all of the miserable people kidnapped and forced to work here. Do I have- oh, I do have blood crystals, good. Time to get some illegal soda. Delicious contraband. Blood fountain, an energy drink that makes you feel like your blood wants to burst out of your body. A good pick-me-up. Interesting, interesting. There's probably some other things to find. I want to try and reach that radio antenna, which I suspect has some kind of cursed music for us. Um, and then next episode, we will be exploring the rest of this, because we're pushing up against my self-imposed and completely arbitrary time limits. But yeah, um, hmm. Deeply concerning. Oh! -ho. <gasps> Who lived here? Henry's apartment, ground zero for the demonic invasion a decade ago. This is where the demon possessed him. He killed his mother and allegedly killed Grace bloodlines. Demons spilled out and corrupted the island. This concrete sarcophagus was built to contain the spread. How Chernobyl of them. As soon as the demonic corruption took hold, it marked the beginning of the end for Island Sequence 24. Which truths are contained within? Well, geez. I'm going to go up to the roof and then come back down, I think. There's a lot to explore here. I was not expecting to f I was not expecting to find a secret passage into a hidden zone. So, uh Um, I'm just going to grab what I can and then we'll actually explore these mysterious doors next episode. Let's see what we get from this temple. Dying from sadness. A sentient rock that drifted to earth in the wake of the other gods. A despair philosopher. Oh, I think these are actually... These are movable, carryable copies of the same information that we get from the statues we can interact with. I think. Interesting, because I'm sure I read that before on one of the static statues. I bet there's a way up there. Let's see. You can't redirect once you're in air. There's actually fairly solid platforming mechanics in that in that case. Um, being able to redirect yourself in the air is is a really common thing in a platformer, but it, it makes it a lot easier to to platform, obviously, since you don't have to worry about hurling yourself into space. So if you do have to think about being careful about your motions, it's rather harder. So yeah, interesting. So the plot has thickened to the point of becoming gelatinous and um, congealed. But I don't seem to be able to... I thought there would be like a field recording or something up here, like the last one we found, since that was also near a radio tower. Anyway, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive back down the stairs and then that's going to be it from me for today. Join me next episode where we continue to explore the dead zone and uh, ponder what on earth is going on with um, with our good buddy Sam Daybreak and why he is distilling hell whiskey out of this cursed quadrant of the city. So that's going to be it from me. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe and share. I also stream on Twitch and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.